Welcome to our presentation around that and um, taking some of the misconceptions about that and, and your small business. So we're going to start. Um, part of the RISE team is uh, obviously myself, Ahmad Kazi. I'm the business development director. Um, I've got more than 15 years experience. I'm a certified business accountant and, and tax practitioner and our, our CEO is uh, Mr. Ilya Shiko, who is the CEO and co-founder of RISE SA. So the basic um, discussion today is going to be about VAT for, for SMMEs um, and we're going to cover topics about uh, VAT registration, the different requirements and then all of those processes involved. Uh, some basic VAT principles and understanding of how to apply VAT, some pros and cons. And then we're going to do um, VAT reporting, um, what you need to do, how you need to do it, and we'll have a conclusion and, and I'll show you some reports within standard accounting and how we can use that as well. So first off, we'll go with VAT registration requirements and basically there are two components. There's voluntary, voluntary VAT um, registration and compulsory VAT registration. Um, and then, so if your taxable supply is less than 50,000 Rand, more than, sorry, more than 50,000 Rand, but less than 1 million Rand per annum, you can still register for that, and that's considered a voluntary registration. And if your taxable supply is more than a million Rand, you must register for that. So um, those are the two requirements for, the major requirements for that registration. It's not limited to whether you're a sole proprietor, whether you're a CC, whether you're a PTY limited or any legal entity your company is. Any company that does um, taxable supply, if they're over a million rand, they must register for VAT. And just to clarify, taxable supply means anything that would be vetable if you are registered. So if you primarily do... Um, something that is non vetable like brown bread. If you only sell brown bread, and even if you sell a million rands worth of brown bread, you are not required to register for VAT because your taxable supply is zero. Because it must be vetable supply. If it's a non vetable supply, then you cannot take that into account. So just bear that in mind. Um, there are a few non vetable supplies out there. Um, so some basic um, VAT principles, prices charged, advertised or quoted must include VAT. You can have both prices there, but you must have the total of the price including VAT. So if your item is um, 114 Rand, including VAT, you are allowed to say 100 Rand excluding VAT, but you must also have somewhere on the, on the ad, on the quote, on the invoice, 114 Rand, you must specify so the total including that. Um, vendors are responsible for making payments on time. Um, it's not the responsibility of SARS to ensure that you submit your VAT returns and pay it on time. VAT payments are due by the 25th of the following month after your end of your VAT period. And we'll cover VAT periods uh, further on. Basically, the, the VAT charge on supply is considered your output VAT, output tax, and less your VAT paid to suppliers, which is your input tax, and other allowable deductions would equal to the VAT that you have to pay to SARS or the VAT that is due as a refund to you. So basically what that means, if you're buying 114,000 Rand worth of taxable or VATable supplies from your suppliers, which would mean that 14,000 Rand is the VAT that you paid. And if your sales is 57,000 Rand, it means that your, your output tax is 7,000 Rand. It means that SARS will give you a 7,000 refund. If it's the other way around and your sales has been 114,000 Rand and your purchases has been 57, it means that you will only need to pay SARS 7,000 Rand. You don't pay SARS the entire 14,000. 
thousand ren on your invoice. You have to keep records of all your input tax, all your supplier invoices, everything that you pay that you're claiming for, you must keep it for a period of five years. SARS can come and request their documents up to five years. So even though they have paid your refund or you have paid the submission, you need to keep that proof for a period of five years. If you are exporting goods, and there are certain limitations with exportation, but if you are exporting goods, you can charge VAT at 0%. Uh, because VAT is only really applicable for goods and services that is consumed within South Africa. So if you are exporting, uh, you are allowed to charge VAT at 0%. Again, there are certain restrictions. Um, if you are delivering to a customer within South Africa and they are going to export it, you must charge VAT. But if you are directly going to do the export to the courier company at the airport via customs and then then you can uh, charge VAT at 0%. So there's some limitations in how that is applied. And as I explained further, earlier on, you cannot register for VAT if you, pri if you primarily make exempt supplies. So what that means is if you, there's certain supplies that are exempt from VAT. So some of those are um, Passenger transport, um, rental property, proper, private, uh, com not commercial, residential property letting. Um, if you are selling maize only, if for certain food stuff, they are are bad exempt supplies. If you're only doing that as your primary primary income, you cannot register for that. You must inform SARS of any changes to your entity, um, banking details, uh, registration, ad registered address, um, uh, who your directors are. Any material changes to your company must be, you must notify SARS within 21 days. Um, mistakes and errors happen within any accounting system. If you pick them up where a mistake was made in your VAT submissions, you must rectify that and remit, remit, um, rectify those mistakes and report it as soon as you can. The penalties from SARS, while they are big, SARS is very open to, to taxpayers that want to do and fix errors. So just because you have a mistake, don't be scared of SARS. SARS is not the, as everyone thinks, out to get people. Um, they, they are very open to discussion um, to avoid penalties because they want taxpayers to be compliant, whether that's debt or income tax. The main concern is for um, taxpayers to be compliant. If you make a mistake, report it and fix it as soon as possible. SARS provides um, different uh, payment methods. So you've got e-filing, you can submit your returns via e-filing, you can make your return via e-filing, you can submit manual um, submissions at any SARS office. Uh, you can submit a check payment or you can do EFT. They've, SARS has bank accounts with all the major banks, uh, so you could uh, do an EFT as well. So they do make it easy for you to pay them and, and they are fairly quick in, in paying out refunds, provided that all the proof of that refund is there. And, and lastly, um, SARS has got an uh, anonymous fraud reporting tool. Um, so anyone that, that has information is free to, to report any sort of fraud anonymously, whether that's you or, or whether you know of anything, and they are open to, to that as well. So those are the other VAT. There is a major concern and problem at, uh, with, within VAT uh, fraud. So SARS really, they, they do ask people to report any sort of VAT fraud that they are aware of. The pros and the cons. So firstly, that being VAT registers automatically decreases your expenses. If you are paying rent for argument's sake for your office and your rent is um, 11,400 and commercial rental is normally a VATable supply and if you are renting from one of these big rental agencies, they charge VAT on that invoice. So if you are not VAT registered, your expense is the full total on the invoice. <laughs> when you are VAT registered, you decrease your expense because you can claim that VAT portion back. Not only just on your rental invoice, 
but also on your other experiences, your, your telephone um, experiences, um, your supply of your goods that you're buying, that you're reselling. Obviously, if you are a service industry, your expenses are mainly your, your HR and your payroll, and, and there's no obviously no back on there. But if you um, in buying and selling goods, if your suppliers are all VAT registered, your cost automatically decreases, and that obviously increases your bottom line. It also improves the perception that other companies have of your company. So larger organizations tend to prefer to deal with companies that are VAT registered, because as I explained earlier, they can claim the VAT back. So if you are a supplier to other larger organizations, if you are not VAT registered, um, they would prefer to buy from someone that is VAT registered. So it obviously improves that perception, it helps you grow, it makes you more credible within the market to be VAT, regi VAT registered. Um, it gives you a competitive edge over other competitors within the market. So again, um, you can run various uh, scenarios in terms of your competitor's pricing, but if your competitor is selling an item for say 100, 105 Rand, but he's not VAT registered, it means that his customers cannot claim back any VAT. But if you are selling your item at 114 Rand, and you are selling to other big organizations, even though your price, including VAT, is more, your customers can claim that VAT back, which means that the actual cost of that item is only 100 Rand. Because to them, they claim the 14 Rand back. So it gives you that edge and, and how you, obviously if you, your, your biggest market is in users, there is no benefit to them and then you can work on, on your pricing differently for end users to make it more competitive. But if you are growing and you're supplying on a B2B basis, you will have that competitive edge over your, uh, your rivals within the space that you are working in. And as I said, explained earlier, it's all about profitability and it does add to your bottom line by being able to claim back that that, that, that you pay on all of your um, invoices for, for goods and services from your suppliers. The cons are, it can affect your cash flow mainly because um, that is due on invoice or not and not when you actually get the money from your suppliers, from your customers. So if you are, if you made huge sales in a month and you have not collected those sales, by the time the VAT is due, you still have to pay that VAT over to SARS. So if for the VAT period you made, you invoiced 114,000 Rand, which means that you your total VAT on your invoices is 14,000 Rand, and your VAT from your suppliers is say 7,000 Rand, it means you owe SAR 7,000 Rand. And if you have not collected that money from your suppliers, you still have to pay SARS that, that VAT. So it can affect your cash flow, especially the bigger your organization, as your organization grows, as your, your book grows, your customer book grows, it does affect your cash flow. It can add, add additional administrative cost and time, more so in the beginning in terms of making sure the system is set up right, time, it is time consuming, um, but once the system is set up right, the only extra cost is really the admin around it, making sure that you have um, competent people being able to administer your, your VAT reports, making sure that everything is right. But if you have a proper accounting system, those costs and time is negligible because everything is done within the system, provided that the system has been set up correctly. So if you set up any accounting system, such as RISE standard accounting, um, if you set it up correctly, your administration costs and your time would be negligible because you, the system is set up so that it can take into account that. Uh, and make sure that you pay it on time. So about the VAT reporting, um, when you register for VAT, you need to um, choose, or SARS will decide 
what reporting periods you fall within. Um, and basically, the, this two monthly period, which is category A or category B, and most uh, small businesses will fall into one of the two. Category A is if your ending period is the last day of the um, uneven month, so that's January, March, May, July, September, November, that would be category A. It means that your that reporting period would be December and January, February and March, April and May. So those two months would be your reporting period and you would need to pay any VAT or submit your sub VAT submission by the 25th of the following month. So the 25th of Feb, you would need to submit your, um, your VAT uh, return and make payment. Category B is um, all the even months. And then you've got category C, which is for turn for companies with a turnover, with the annual turnovers likely to be more than 30 million. So those are your large, big corporates. Um, and SARS has told them that they must make it monthly. Six monthly category, micro businesses. So as a small business, you can apply to be a micro business and you can tell SARS, well, let me do it every six months. Um, SARS will allow for that registration, but you need to motivate it. So it does give you some sort of leeway. The only other problem is you're going to have to do six month reporting. Um, and if your business grows exponentially within that six months, it can be a problem as you have sitting with this huge amount of cash that you might be after OSARS or that you might need to reclaim back from SARS. Category E, which is annual companies and, and um, annual submissions. Uh, those are special companies and trusts, and uh, that's a special application that needs to be done to SARS, uh, and it's not really applicable, but it's only here for information purposes. So further about VAT reporting, the VAT report is the VAT 201, that's the VAT form. You will fill this form in, you will submit your, your input tax and your output tax, and it will have a calculation there at the end which will show you what, you what you're getting back or what you owe SARS. And it's due the 25th day after the end of your VAT period. So as I explained before, if your period, your end period is Jan, you need to submit by the 25th day of Feb or the working day before, if the last, if 25th is on a Sunday, it needs to be the preceding working day. Again, on, on VAT reporting, uh, most VAT registration is based on the invoice basis and not on the accrual basis, but I will explain what the accrual basis is. But it is a special um, application that you can do with SARS to apply for an accrual basis. So the invoice basis is the time of supply is the time of supply is earlier of the invoice issued or payment received. So what this basically means is if that invoice is issued today, it's part of your VAT report for this month. But irrespective of whether you have received the money from your supply, from your customer or not, and this is where really the fact of um, that it can affect your cash flow. The second one is the payment basis, and that is only paid on actual receipt of payment. So what this means is if you issue an invoice to a customer for 114,000 Rand and you haven't received the money from the customer and two months later or three months later they only pay you, you only pay the VAT once the customer has paid you. Just a, a quick uh, little example of what it looks like um, and this is this you can do with various amounts. So on the invoice basis if your total sales is 57,000 Rand but you only received 11,400 Rand, you still need to pay SARS 4,200 Rand. If you are on the payment basis, if your customer only paid you 1,400 Rand and your input tax was 2,800 Rand, SARS will pay you a refund of 1,400 Rand. And you will only pay the VAT on that output tax the minute your customers pay you. So it does help small businesses, but this you need to apply for. And, and SARS will, will approve whether or not um, they will give you that payment basis instead of the invoice basis. I have worked with SARS for about 10 years. I have not received a successful application for, in, for payment basis application. 
uh, because simply it, it does not benefit SARS. Okay, so as I explained, standard accounting is our accounting application. And within standard accounting, we have VAT um, settings. We fully VAT compliant. And uh, if you have a proper accounting system like our application, you will save time and money in your VAT submissions. Uh, we've got the full tax system that has all the categories. Um, you can show where the prices include VAT and so forth. There's multiple reporting options. There's normal VAT and the cash basis. So if you are a cash basis, um, if you approve for cash basis, you can have it, you can change it in the settings. Um, all the categories are there for category A, B, C, D, or E. So depending on what SARS assigns you, when SARS uh, approves your VAT registration, they will send you a letter indicating what category you, you fall under. And then obviously all the VAT codes are there. 14% uh, exported goods, exempt supply, um, imported services and uh, adjustments or zero rated. So all of those items, all the VAT codes are there. And then obviously the VAT report showing uh, the period, a two month period, it shows you your input tax and your output tax and then it will do a calculation at the end to show how much you are due as a refund. And these totals you can either use them to manually capture on SARS e-filing or you can print it out and attach it and, and co copy the, in, the information onto a physical VAT 201 form and you can attach this as part of your proof of submission and submit it to SARS. In conclusion, so RISE standard accounting caters for both VAT and non-VAT registered companies and um, if you are non-VAT registered and you're using standard accounting and you change to a VAT registered um, entity, it's simply a matter of changing a setting within the system. It's, it's not a major uh, change and from that point onwards you will be, um, it will start automatically doing um, VAT uh, accounting for VAT within the system. Um, also another thing that we can do within standard accounting, if you are not VAT registered and you are considering to become VAT registered, you can work within a copy of your live data to see how VAT registration will benefit or impact your company. So before you make that decision, you can run your live data into a demo copy. Within our application, you have two versions. You've got your live version and you've got a copy of your live version. And that copy you can then use uh, to do different scenarios and see how it impacts you and you can see what the VAT registration, how it will benefit your company. Um, a bit more about RISE and accounting, RISE business solutions. So what we do is we develop business software all the way from entry level accounting packages, payroll accounting, ERP and all the way to um, major ERP systems. Our products include I standard accounting, business management, and 1C ERP. We have some useful links. Um, our website, our, our company website, our um, standard accounting app, a website where you can sign up and sign up for demo account. And obviously 1C, uh, which is the development platform that we work on. And my contact details for further information should you need to speak to us, you're more than welcome to give us a call, speak to either me or, or Ilya, or we'll send us an email and we're more than happy to, to help you and, and assist you in any way we can. Thank you.